the world in the outdoors can get hectic at times with uh, travel becoming an issue, with jockeying for space. Yeah, jockeying for space on the water and, and in the outdoors, that can be an issue. And boy, technology becoming supposedly a big part of our outdoor world. I always say, keep it simple if you can. Yeah, even the outdoors can get caught up in the rat race. But for me, there's always one place to experience and enjoy the real outdoors, and that's with my longtime friends, Harry and Mary Lamreth, in a canoe, fishing for smallmouth in their backyard, the Boundary Waters out of Ely, Minnesota. He has a buddy with him too, Mary. Was there? Mm-hmm. Very good. This trip to the Quitico, the Boundary Waters, is not an easy one now. It requires lots of paddling, sometimes all day long, lots of portaging, maybe six or eight during the day, depending on where you're going, of course, and camping. Can you sleep with a rock under your sleeping bag? But here's the upside. You have it all to yourself, probably a million acres up there. They're all yours, so you can get lost, get lost from the world. And most of the folks in the park are canoe and so the fishing is sure enough all yours and the fish are smallmouth bass so that does it i'm jerry mckinnis welcome to the fishing home the fishing home presented by steve is brought to you by ranger boats still building legends one at a time mitchell as long as there are fish Mercury, number one on the water. And by Steel, the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. What's your favorite site in the outdoors? If you're looking at one of mine, loons. And if uh, I camped on a lake up there in the Boundary Waters that didn't have a pair, I might just have to move to another lake. Watch how synchronized they are. Yeah. Oop. Watch how gone they are. <laughs> Do you know how deep these guys can dive? I'm told that it's hundreds of feet. And I guess they're just about as fast under the water as a fish. I'd love to be a loon for a day. Yeah. Loon for a day. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a new game show. Are they fishing, you think? I wonder what they do when they scoot along and they got their head like that? They're looking underwater. Think they're looking? Sure. Are they? Yeah. I'll be doing. They're saying, wow, well, look at all the big bass right here. Those Why don't you and I do down. that? You get up on the front of the canoe. You go first. You stick your head in and I'll paddle you like a son of a gun. <laughs> you stick your head over that and I'll stick <laughs> my head over the end of here. And every now and then we'll stick our heads up and make a goofy sound. Well, goofy maybe, but it normally tells me that I'm, first of all, by myself, and there's some good fishing around. And we're going to show you some of that today. Good to have you with us today. The fishing hole has made a stop to the Canadian Minnesota boundary waters. And to my way of thinking, we are with the ultimate outdoor couple, Harry and Mary Lambert. They guide smallmouth fishermen uh, into the Quitico Park four months out of the year with canoeing and camping skills that are unmatched. They deer hunt and, and duck hunt. A couple of months after the fishing season, they raise sled dogs and of course they race them during the winter and they survived the Minnesota winters in the small town of, of Black Duck, Minnesota where Mary still does all the cooking on a wood stove. Real quick estimation. Well, how about that one? How many uh, four pound bass have you had in your boat this summer? Oh. The summer's half over. Half over? Huh? Ah, oh, I have no idea. Uh, 20, 50? 
Is that in my canoe? Yeah, just in your canoe. In so. my canoe. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what? 50? Yeah. 75? 50. Not too long ago when I was up there, we camped on Crooked Lake, and instead of fishing with Harry, I, I wanted to feature Mary. She's such an interesting lady. And let me tell you a little bit about the normal schedule, which is to get up with the sun, grab a cup of coffee, and go fish for a couple hours. Then you come in and, and have blueberry pancakes with freshly picked blueberries, <laughs> the best bacon you have ever tasted, and a couple over easy, and you're ready to go. But now remember, that's after the two hours of fishing. And so help me. What you are going to see today is Mary and I's adventure before breakfast. I mean, it's pretty good, but... That's a lot of that's a lot of big smallmouth bass, and I started to say, and, and so you're between you and Harry, then you've got an easy hundred. Oh yeah, and then you figure the other canoes with us. I'm proud of you, Jerry. <laughs> I know you had lost faith when I caught that stick a minute ago. Mm -hmm. This isn't a four pounder, but isn't he, isn't he a nice one? He's a nice one. Those guys thought he was nice, those loons. He's been to four pounder school. He has. And... Uh oh, here's some loons behind me there. Hey, we're about 10 minutes paddle from the camp throwing some topwater yeah. baits, primary tubes and jigs, though, and concentrating in eight or ten feet of water. The small little island sticking out just behind me there. There you can see it right over to my left. And, and I think the smallmouth were having a convention around that island. Every single time you could drop a bait along a boulder out in front of the island, you were normally in business. And I'm, I'm convinced that these were smallmouth bass and this was the first time they had seen a lure all year long. Hey, look at here. Look at here, Mayor. A double. A double. I'm afraid he's not, but shoot, that's pretty good. Isn't it funny? This fishing is just yeah, as good, if not better, than it was the first time I ever went up to these boundary waters. And that was 35 years ago, and all because it's hard to get to. It's physically difficult to get back into these waters, so people just don't go very much, and I love that. Hey, Mayor, look here. Good, nice fish. <laughs> you have such a sensitive touch. Yeah. Hey, he was spitting out crawdads. See him? Mm-hmm. I had one other one doing that this morning. Are we doing good, Mary? We're doing good. We having fun? Having fun. Wow. Nice stripes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that again. Let's do that again. go Mary that is what we came out on this little ridge for now these fish so far anyway haven't been anything to write home about but you're about to see things start changing these waters are famous for it four pound plus fish no, I'm fine are you sure that's another stick I'm sure 
though his friends may call him Stick. Mary, is there any, is there another lady in the world that's caught 50, had 50 smallmouth bass this year over four pounds in her boat? Probably not. <laughs> the more I think about it, Mary, you and I have always been honest with each other, haven't we? That's right. I wish I had caught that. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, isn't it fun when there's a big all they can do is wobble when they get up mm. to the boat? Oh my goodness. Well, Jerry. Go on, he's what barely you? hooked. Is it? Oh, look at you. Way to go, girl. Well, I skipped the four pounders this time. <laughs> you went right to the five, Straight didn't you? Straight to five. You need my little plier? You got something? I got something. Oh, Jerry. Matt would be proud of you. Yeah, I love loons, but those smallmouth are the ultimate creatures in the outdoors. And coming up, Mary's gonna, gonna outdo that last one. I'm Jerry McKinnis, and so far today, I haven't been out of this canoe. Boy, I need to stretch my legs. Hey, I haven't been out of that canoe because I'm in the Minnesota Boundary Waters, and that's about all that's allowed in these waters. I'd like to go up there someday. Well, i tell you the best way to get started on it. Get some information by contacting the Ely, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Ely's the, it's a jumping off spot into the park, and I promise you they can supply you with all the info you need. Now I'm, as I have been for many, many years with Harry and Mary Lambert. They outfit a trip a week for 12 straight weeks with, for the most part, the same 12 parties that they've been with for the last 30 years. So they're almost impossible to get with and I am sorry about that because every outdoorsman in the world should get the opportunity to spend a week with with this couple however there are other good guides in the area oh my gosh that's a little better than five think that's bigger than one you caught a minute ago yeah no problem thank you fish <laughs> you want to go in for breakfast jerry huh you want to go in for breakfast yeah let's no You've never, you're, you make good pancakes, but you've never made them that good. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're having for breakfast this morning, pancakes? No. No? Chef Lambert is doing French toast. No kidding. My Again, word. all that you are seeing today has happened and is happening uh, yes. before yeah, breakfast in that little two hour there. period I was talking about, which just goes to show you how good this can be and we're on crooked lake other than canoers just paddling by we will see no one all day long of miss modern Rila. now just a little more about mary and her husband oh what's his name oh yeah harry <laughs> hey i've known these folks long enough to to kid them a little bit they have no tv of course, they don't have one up in the park, but in their home, they don't have a TV. They read books. They listen to NPR radio. Their hero is Garrison Keeler. They're big Minnesota twin fans. They used to follow Indiana basketball, but now they've switched to Texas Tech for some reason. And they are absolutely up on all current events in spite of the life that they lead. Oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what a, what a smallmouth. So Mary, I have more people. You know, everybody knows how much I like to fish for smallmouth. Mm -hmm. And so they'll say, so where's the best place you've ever fished for smallmouth? Right here in this curved yeah, spot. Right, right there. And, and I'll say, well, the boundary waters. And they'll say, really? 
How come? This, this is how come. We That's rest our case, don't we, Mary? That's right, right here. You and I are just about ready to meet, old buddy. Nope. Not quite. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> These are five pound fish, Mary. I know. Consistently. Mm. This one's got a nick on his side, see it? I'm loving this. And we still got enough time before breakfast to do it one more time, so please stay with us. The Fishing Hole, presented by Steve, is brought to you by Spike It Bait Company. How do you spike it? Mercury, number one on the water. Ranger, still building legends one at a time. And by Steel, the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Biggin? Nice one. He's gonna jump. Way to go, Mary. Always a pleasure to take you to the Boundary Waters in northern Minnesota. I'm Jerry McKinnis, and I've uh, been doing a little figuring here, and I've probably spent about a hundred days of my life up there in the park, and every single one of them have been with the Lamberts. Boy, I'm really proud of that. In the ocean He's now, isn't he? Going for the deep. Is it one of them real big ones? Oh, he's Hard to tell. You know. This is a very special man and wife, and this is a special place. I mean, we're catching a special fish. I'm proud the fishing hole has allowed me boy, 40 years now, has allowed me to expose these kind of things. Doing good, Mayor. Isn't this the point on them TV shows where they start saying, ooh, nice fish? Ooh. Oh, what a pretty one. Oh, beautiful fish, Jerry. Look at the color in that fish. It normally means they've caught a little fish. In this case, Mary, you don't have to say a whole lot, do you? My gosh, this, fish, this lake's got some uh, big old bass in it, doesn't it? Oh, big old bass. Trying to keep it in good shape here. You have a got, got him whipped, don't you? Yeah, uh, he's he's trying to whip me. Hey Mary, what are we gonna do after breakfast? Go fishing. What are you gonna do for an encore? Well. Hard to top this morning, isn't it? <laughs> That's the truth. Believe me, they don't come every morning. Mm. My goodness. Now don't let him ram the boat. Don't put want a, a dent in the boat, put right? A <laughs> I thought, you know, I think they were, that's funny. <laughs> what a monster. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.